I'm Chuck, this is What is the Wheel, and I need to find a place to put my fuel pump. So today, I'm going to make a top plate for my Predator motor. I'm going to make this plate to mount to the three points that the fuel tank mounted to. I've already checked the pan side, and there is no obstruction. The pan doesn't stick up above the line of the block. I'm going to put the blower housing on here real quick, and just look and see if there's any interference points, and it looks like actually uh, right in here, uh, I'm going to have to drop this pan seat, uh, pan down to, and then it's going to, I'll put a bend in it and come up right here, and it's actually going to interfere right there. So what I'll do is bring it over just a little bit from this mount point and give me some clearance. How I'm going to do this is with CAD design, cardboard aided design. Uh, that's not my joke, that's from Project Binky, which is, uh, I'll put a link to that in my notes at the bottom. There's a great show, it's worth watching, an amazing job putting a Celica Alltrack turbo drivetrain in a, an original vintage 60s Mini. It's amazing, amazing work. So we're going to use this cardboard to get our shape. And this is a great way to do this rather than working with the material you're going to use, which in this case is going to be uh, 065 aluminum sheet. And if you, when you use this, if you make a mistake, it's not that big a deal. You could tape back in. It's easy to trim. You do it with a pair of scissors and you make sure you've got your shape right. Then you transfer that to your metal and cut your metal out. That way you, you don't have as much waste. It's a lot faster to experiment around and get it like you want it before you do your final cut. I know I don't want it much wider than these two ears, so I just measure those. And they come out to just a tick under 12 centimeters wide. So we'll trim our cardboard in a 12 centimeter wide strip and then we'll work from there. Find a pencil. Mark it 12. I'm going to mark it at 12 again down here somewhere. Do this the easy way. <laughs> Try and find a clear spot long enough to use this rule. This is just a piece of stock aluminum I got just for doing stuff like this. Just makes it the easier. Uh, and if you do screw it up, you just throw it away and get another one or set it aside and use it for some other project. Make sure we got that long enough. We're about 18. And we have cut this thing to, yeah, 27. That should give me plenty of extra material. We'll go ahead and just go a little bit farther just to be sure. Okay, it's a great thing about using this cardboard is that you can do that. You got your extra material. If you do screw something up, it's not that big a deal because cardboard is cheap. And um, the, the, the uh, aluminum sheet is not cheap. Aluminum sheet is, I've got a 3x4 sheet that was over $100. All right, we've got our piece of cardboard rough cut out. We can lay it right on here. We can see where we're gonna kind of go maybe with these holes. Go straight across here. And I, I do want to bend it down. So I'm gonna drop it down and bring it straight across. So I'm gonna take my pencil, just make a mark right about there. On the edge of the table here. You can see that right there on the edge of the table. Improvise, let's make sure it's straight. Like that. All right, so we'll just kind of improvise a <clears throat> break. There's another advantage of using a piece of cardboard. So I've got like that, right about like that. And then we're going to drop it down just a little bit more. Take our pencil and figure out right about, right about like that. Do the same thing. So now we're going to do it the other direction. So we'll transfer our mark to the other side. Make sure it's straight. Same thing, give it a little bend down. Straight, reasonably straight. Like that. Alright, so now we have 
this piece is going to go right like this. Look how snazzy that looks. And then our final bend is going to be along here. We need to come straight up. And we also have our, we're going to have to put a hole in here for this, this vent port. I'm going to bend this thing straight up. We're going to do this and mark it right. Like that. Okay. Okay. We've got our bins, and this needs to come up. This one here. Like this. thing we'll do is we've got our porthole and we can just give it a little and this is another great thing about this is you can make your your transfer marks you can see right there we got a little transfer mark fantastic for making gaskets and stuff long back in the day i used to use a socket which also works if you don't have a set of these but you can buy a set of these uh, hole punches for 20 30 bucks and they're great for making gaskets and cutting cardboard all right like that and uh, we've got our bin here in about the right spot got the basic shape of our pan and these pans is I'm gonna need this pan on here because like I said I got to put the fuel pump on there a missing fuel pump the found fuel pump and we got to figure out how we're gonna mount this on here this is the uh, port line that's gonna go to this and then you're in and out for your fuel and like I, I think I said before it say on here it does not tell you which one is in and which one is out so you got to figure that on your own um, but we've got to put this on here some way so that we can maybe maybe even like this right here so we have bring this up and around like that because you need to have a nice curve in there you don't want to kink it and then fuel in and fuel out or fuel in and fuel out but we also need to bring this over because we're going to have uh, an interference issue and so I'm going to do the same thing that I did making the hole I'm just going to get this kind of lined up where I like it and then I'm going to rub against this through the cardboard against the metal like that and it'll create my cut line pencil in and make sure I roughly how I want it. Like that. Now make sure that's a then you make get kind of eyeballs like okay does that seem about right? Yeah it seems about right. Alright. Draw our 
line. Go over just a tad, give me just a little extra room here. All right. And I say draw a line, I'm actually not going to draw a line, I'm just going to cut it. curve in. Check it one more time. All right, all you could ask for. Got plenty of extra space up here. You put some stickers up there because we all know stickers equals horsepower. That's why my toolbox has over a thousand horsepower. I think that's pretty good. Now we're going to transfer it to metal and cut it out of that. Got my 065 aluminum here. Most of this is going to become a seat and a foot pan for the go-kart, but we're going to use this for some other projects as well because, hey, 100 bucks, may as well use every bit of it. So we're going to put our little cardboard cutout that we made right here and just outline it. Look at that. Once we get it cut out, we'll go ahead and put our lines, our cross lines, where we're going to fold it. Now to cut it. To cut this, I'm going to use this thing right here, the poorly named Dick Fos. Uh, it's a nibbler. It has a little hardened steel bit right in here, and it goes up and down and cuts out little half moon pieces, uh, which is fantastic if you ever walk through your shop in socks. You will uh, scare yourself repeatedly. So we're going to, I've got a L square on here to use as a guide. Uh, I'm going to freehand this part right here and uh, this thing is powered by a hand drill. So uh, I'm going to use my trusty uh, Milwaukee uh, 3 8 drill and this is either going to work great or be hysterical one of the two. ran into a little issue here I failed to account for the thickness of the cutter so you can see uh, this thing cuts I don't know what is that like three millimeters wide and so what I'm going to need to do is adjust for that by moving this over and out a little bit to compensate so that I'm cutting to right about the outside of the line so not a huge deal but uh, definitely something if you ever use one of these cutters something to be aware of there's lots of ways you could do this you could do it with a pair of uh, snips you could you can actually do it with a saw uh, or you could do it with a hacksaw if you're super patient although it'd be hard to cut a straight line that long uh, unless you're Alan Maillard um, uh, let's see here uh, you could use a bandsaw um, you could do it with a circular saw it's super loud but you could do it with a circular saw uh, but I'm gonna give this another go get after I get everything readjusted Okay, I've got my L square moved over. I've uh, got a bigger battery on my drill. I was going to use a corded drill, but it um, won't start. So we're going to snap on corded drill. Finally died after three years. All right, here we go, one more time. And I'm going to actually go ahead and continue to cut along this line since that's where I started. And we'll try and stay centered. fantastic got a little bit of wiggle in there but we'll take a file and straighten all that out now we're going to try this hopefully this part will be straighter hopefully
had to add a little lube there. terribly cut plate. We're going to go after it with a file and fix it up. Okay, the Dickfoss, eh, is alright. It did an okay job. Uh, better for cutting uh, roundy round shapes rather than trying to cut a straight line for sure. I probably should have just put a carbide blade on my circular saw and cut it with that. It would have been loud and messy, uh, but it would have. I could have gotten a really straight line with it. But well, we're going to go ahead and hit it with a file. We're going to just straighten up this edge here a little bit. And so it doesn't look like I was drunk when I was doing it. Get around this, around this a half round bastard file. And we're get in this corner of this curve here. We'll get that. And then we're also going to round off these sharp edges. We don't skewer ourselves. And of course, and full disclosure, uh, if if you make one uh, uh, need to make one of these little pans for your or trays for your predator, I think you could buy one for like ten bucks, which is way less work than this. This is uh, you know a fair amount of work to do something you could just buy, but you know. Then you wouldn't have made it yourself. So there's, there's definitely something to be said for that. You know, I don't, I don't know exactly what it is that's said for that, but you know, it's, you know, something for that. So, all right, keep it rounded. Edit, edit, edit. Get our edges. We've got a little, a little ridge there. Where this, where it got cut, and actually where they cut it at when a metal shop I bought it from, they got a little bit of a, created a little bit of a sharp lip. So we're going to take care of that. And of course, I have scratched the heck out of this thing, uh, which is just not good. I, it's like uh, the, it was covered with plastic. Uh, you want to leave the plastic on there. Ideally, you would have it on better service than this piece of cast aluminum or, or uh, galvanized steel, and it so that it will look better. Um, this is going to be this is the upside, and of course, it is the side that's all scratched to pieces. I'll probably hit it with some sandpaper and create a rough finish on it. That'll something that'll look a little bit better, so that it will look better than it does right now. Because you know, it's like you can see it. If I had been thinking, this side right here looks much, much better to start with, and so I should have like paid more attention to that when I was cutting this out. But I didn't, so there you go. That's what happens. Alright, so we got pretty close. Now we just need to put our bins in it. Hopefully we'll get them right the first time. And drill our holes and we'll be done. All right, so I might have actually created something kind of cool looking. I used uh, angle, this quarter inch uh, angle grinder with a uh, basically a buffing or a smooth sanding head. It's like nearly worn out. And I got this effect. That actually looks kind of cool. I like that. If I was really determined to do something nice, I would make sure the lines were perfectly straight as they go across. But it really took all the scratches out and I might buff it just a little bit. It'd probably turn out pretty good. So I'm, I'm actually pretty pleased with that. What I got here is a cheap Harbor Freight brake. Uh, it's, it's pretty cheap, um, but it does do the job as long as you don't have to do anything super fancy. And you could actually, if you needed to do like finger braking or box braking, you could cut it so that you could have a shorter piece. So if you needed to like box in and bend just a short section, like right here from here, to here, oh, you can't see that because my fingers are in the way. From here to here, uh, you could cut this thing right like that, and then have a short section in order to uh, box break. But this thing is exactly like I got it. 
I don't even have it bolted or anything. I just got it clamped to the table right now. I've got my line marked. I'm going to pick this up, sit it down right on the line. Make sure you can see what I'm doing here. And this is one of those things where uh, order of operations uh, can be kind of important because uh, if you you might make a bend that will prevent you from then making another bend. So you got to be kind of careful about that. Let me get this right on that, right on the line. This top piece is beveled on this side and flat on this side. The bevel is because in order to get a 90 degree bend, you actually have to go past 90 degrees slightly because it's going to spring back a little bit. And then this thing is so cheap that it doesn't even uh, come with any kind of clamping device except for well, actually, this didn't come with it. This is one of my welding clamps. Okay. Yeah, it's down. Get this nice and snug. So it looks like it's straight. Okay. And we're just going to make sure that's back. Okay. Bend it. Past. Yep, that's about right. Okay, first bend complete. Fantastic. Okay. As I was talking about order of operations, watch me have figured this out wrong because I have to do two more bends, and you can actually see this is it's slightly past. I've got it. A, it's a little over. I will over bend it just a little bit, but I can. Well, the Adam Savage, what they call it, fixing in post. Looks like we can bend it back, back a little bit. And get it straight. One of the great things about metal is that it is pretty, can be pretty easy to work with. So it's pretty straight. Off just a little bit still. Okay. Okay. Now I've got to do two more bends right here. So we're just going to do our, take our piece, put it on here line up with the, the line the paper part up with the metal part and put our lines in with our Jim Dandy pencil. Now of course this is one of those things that doesn't have to be super exact because of what the part is and nothing I do is super exact. So now I got to think about this how do I need to put this piece in here in order to get it? And I got to, I need to draw my lines to make sure that it's pretty straight. Like that. Make sure my lines are pretty straight. So when I put it on here, my bends are pretty straight. Okay, so we got to do two bends. We're going to have to bend. We're going to do one bend up, and then we're going to do another bend back flat. So which one do we want to do first? So if we bend this up and then bend this part back down. So actually that might work. We do this first, this bend first, we bend it up. We can flip it over and bend, do this second bend uh, uh, also up. So we'll give that a shot. And then watch me uh, screw it up and have to start over again. Actually, we just keep bending it. Start bending and bending the hammer until we get it like we want it. And like I said, this brake it's cheap, but it uh, it does get the job done as long as you're just doing simple bends. And you you could actually do this without uh, uh, a bending tool. Um, I for years would just use a big vise and and a hammer, and you can actually get, especially in steel, this aluminum stuff will softer, but in steel you can get some pretty nice looking stuff. And we're going to try and bend this to more or less match this angle, so it's straight and it matches this angle. Well, I can't even see that. Look at that. There we go. There it is. So match this angle right here. And there's still oil in the motor. Who believes it? Alright, here we go. over a little bit because it's slipping some it's forward and there's one thing is you do have to have it very tight to get a nice sharp bend 
put it right in the middle. Ah, get it nice and tight. I probably should use bigger, bigger clamps. Work with what we got. Okay. That's probably about right. All right, so we'll take that off. Take a look at it. All right, I think that's not, that's not going to be too bad there. And then our final bend, and like actually, you can see, same thing off just a tiny little bit right there but we'll do this final bend I'm actually going to go off of this line just a little bit just a little above it and I think that'll that'll be about the right uh, amount so this bend needs to be hot ah, ah, and this is where I have screwed up right here because I'm going to need to go down and so I have made a mistake because I wasn't thinking and I'm going to have to uh, I don't have enough room to do this flat, so I need because I can't lay it flat down underneath there. So I ha I have made a mistake, and so now I've got to figure out what I'm going to do about that. And probably what it's going to end up being is I'm going to straighten this back out and catch this piece underneath here, and then go back and redo this part and see see how that works for me. Uh, but that is that's part of it. It's like you you know you order of operations, and this is definitely not one of my my strong suits. Uh, if I could bend it down, and you know what? That's what we're going to do. We're going to try a dirty trick. I'm going to put this on the back side of this thing, right like this. Put it on the back side. And let's see here. Get all this stuff lined up here. Get two clamps. All right. Don't rush shame my clamps. My clamps are old. These are, these are really old. So I'm gonna improvise a little bit here. See how it works. I'm put I'm gonna put one on either side, which is really not a bad idea anyway, uh, because the the tighter you grip this this top plate, the uh, better your the harder your edge is going to be where your harder your bend is going to be all right so now let's give this a shot and see what happens see how much i can get in the way ah. 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 all right and so i just had an aneurysm You know what though? I think that worked. Wait a second. Let's take a look here. Look at that. It almost looks like I knew what I was doing there. And then all we got left is the hole and for the uh, this. And I'm going to find that by doing this dirty trick right here. I'm gonna line this thing up. We're just gonna eyeball it for right now. Kind of see right about where it is. And, and there you go. I've got my little center hole. I know exactly where that hole is. When you're dealing with thin material like this, you don't want to cut it with a drill a regular twist drill. Uh, you want to use which a twist drill? That's a twist drill. You don't want to cut it with that because this thin stuff, this twist is going to bite into that aluminum and yank the thing, tear it up, bend it, yank it across the floor. So I like using these. This is a, a hole drill, step drill, and these uh, you can cut any size super fast. It gives you a pretty clean cut. If you get a little bit of lip on the other side, just flip it over and just touch it and it'll take it right off. So we're gonna do this right now. Let's go ahead and we're gonna eyeball this thing in here. Watch it walk all over the place.
Look at that, clean up our hole. Well, almost. And it's going to make a liar out of me. There we go. So now we got a nice, clean, finished hole. That was super quick. All right, I'm going to set the plate down. Holes in the right spot. Uh, this has still got a little bit of bend to it. I need to straighten it just a little bit more. Um, and I need to drill my holes over here for my mounting bolts. But we're pretty close to done. Last thing, we need to put some holes in here so we can bolt the plate down. There's a couple of ways you can find those holes. Uh, you can use these. Uh, they're center punches. There's a you get 30 different sizes. They fit into the hole, the diameter of the hole. They got a little punch center on them, and they are great for finding center points when you're trying to like drill, do exactly what we're doing right here. You've got this hole over here. You find the one that fits right in there, and you give it a tap. Uh, the only issue with this is I don't have a whole lot to tap against because when I'm I, I got to really you got to hold it tight in place to get a, an impression. It's got to be tight enough that you can get an impression with the, that that tip. So instead of using that. I'm going to use this funky marker right here, and I like these for, they're good for marking holes too, they're really long and thin. This one is almost completely dry, but it's going to, it'll do the job for this. So we're going to eyeball it, same thing, a precision eyeball right there, stick this through the hole, do our mark, hold this. mark there try and figure out where the heck the hole is there it is get our mark right there all right and now we hopefully ooh they're faint we have got our marks in here and just I can barely see them so I'm gonna take a pencil and mark them a little bit brighter a little bit brighter that and then this one right here clearly time to throw that marker away all right so we've got this uh, ready we're going to use the same thing I'm just going to use the step drill and drill these holes out and I am going to eyeball this one more time make sure I'm happy with especially these two back holes right here and where's my marker at just to check just to double check one time because I'm, I'm a little iffy on that one on those two Yep, that's the spot. All right. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna use uh, this eight mil, uh, which is the same size as what was holding the tank on there. So I just decided to use those, and I got the same style. These uh, small head with the flange built into them. Nice, pretty decent finish right there. And this one's gonna be a little on the tough side because I don't have a lot to work with here. Let's see if we can do this. You know what? Let's actually be professional. Who believes? We'll be kind of professional anyway. Actually clamp this. This is a Harbor Freight clamp. These things are great. Uh, I'm among many of the other things that I was moderately good at was I used to build guitars and I got a hundred of these things for guitar building because you're constantly clamping wood together. All right. And ordinarily I would also pilot this. I'd take a little pin punch and put a pilot in there. But these uh, step drills bite so good that I, you really don't need to. Although watch this one walk right across the uh, metal here. side looks like and a little bit of an issue here I don't know if I can get the drill in there I'm gonna give it a shot though that's yeah, not bad all right so 
So, got all of our holes drilled and we're ready to bolt it right on. Top pan complete. Got our matching hardware here, which I doesn't matter if it looks stock or not, but it matches all the other hardware, so it looks good. We've got our hole drilled, and we almost got it in the center. Yeah, close, close enough, close enough. Uh, this is bolted in. It looks pretty straight. Not bad, not bad. Uh, for, what, hours worth of work? And buying a $100 sheet of aluminum? I suggest everybody do it. Once again, like, subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment, especially leave a comment. I like comments, so please leave a comment, uh, good or bad. Have a great day.